Thank you very much for that kind introduction, dear Professor Pasariello and the dear Siemens faculty. Thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. So we are now talking about colorectal cancer. And this is actually a disease that will again in the year 2005 kill 30,000 people in Germany, 55,000 people in the United States. And we are talking about those very, very high figures, although we know that colorectal cancer can be widely prevented by early diagnosis of precursor lesions, which are polyps. And just as an introduction showing you this image here, which is a 3D volume rendered image, an endoluminal display of a four millimeter polyp, which was seen actually in the colon of a patient who is here 69 years old. This is a uh, picture from a 64 slice examination. So now I'm gonna show you a case. I'm gonna also explain to you the way I tend to look at those cases. And uh, actually, first of all, I look at this kind of simulated double contrasparent enema view here in this patient. And you're actually gonna say, okay, so this looks terrible because the colon is not too well distended and actually have a lot of air in the small bowel of this patient. So you can just enhance this by clicking on this button. You're gonna see that everything that is not pertain to the colon is being shown in blue, also the lung base here. And actually this patient did indeed have an insufficiency of the ileocecal valve. But it does not prevent, and this is why I show this case to you, a very nice evaluation of the colon. And this is a patient you can see all important pathologies in just one examination, and this is why I actually chose this case. So there is still controversy about how to read a virtual colonoscopy. And I just two weeks ago discussed, I'd say, with the leading European experts in, in Belgium about how everybody does it. And I'd say it's still uh, split into the ones that do primary 2D and the ones that do uh, primary 3D read. So I actually do primary 3D, and this is what I'm going to show you. Up to now, there are no clinical trials that would show statistically significant differences between those two approaches. So everybody can pretty much do the approach he wants, or he prefers personally. And I think the nice thing about this software is that it's actually one of the few systems in the market you can equally use for primary 2D or primary 3D read. And we're gonna now start, we're setting here, and you say, okay, this small bowel, I don't need this anymore, just hit the delete button, and this is gonna be subtracted, leaving you with this nice volume rendered image of the colon itself. We see, this is actually the plane of my camera here. To see that better, I'm gonna switch back to the DCBE view. You can see now clearly that we are sitting with the camera right in the sigmoid, and this is where we're gonna start our evaluation of the fly-through. So I stop flying now on this patient here, and you can see how the 3D image is actually being displayed, and you can also see that this axial view up here, is actually with the patient in the prone position, is automatically being updated while I'm flying. And normally you would see a green center line here, which I can just easily switch on by just showing the flight path. I already evaluated this case, and so this is why I switched it off. But normally this shows you where the center line of this colon is. And all this is being done totally automatically by the software, so there's no need of interaction to get this information here. So I'm flying in this patient, <coughs> looking at the colon. We're, of course, looking for colorectal polyps, and polyps with lesions that protrude into the lumen. We're already facing a lesion right here. And uh, what you want to do is uh, get more information about lesions, so just put a marker on it. And this marker is automatically gonna show up in the endoluminal view and also in those two views here, the axis and the coronal reformatted image. The number 25 is, would normally be, of course, number one if you start evaluation. I already did it in this patient, so you can double click on this image. You can blow it up. You can indeed just quickly scroll back and forth. This is what, how I routinely perform this to see that this is a real polypoid lesion here, and of course this needs to be confirmed by looking at the supine view as well. But just for now I'm going to go on and show you more lesions that can be displayed in this patient here. And actually you see that the colon, although it is not too well distended, is nicely prepared and you can see that there's another large lesion sitting here at the right hand wall of the colon. So again, just put a lesion marker on it and you can also display this image right here in soft tissue window. You're easily gonna see that this is a soft tissue mass you're seeing here. And on the down right corner right here, you're going to see the attenuation of that mass. So if I put my cursor in here, it's gonna show like 65 pounds per units, which is indeed a soft tissue mass. So next thing would be, of course, to say how big this lesion actually is. So you can click on this auto measurement tool right here. Just click onto the lesion itself. And there's going to be a three-dimensional automated volume measurement of that lesion. And you can actually just say, okay, I think
think this is what the size of the lesion is. You can see those planes here, the red one being the coronal plane, this one being the axial plane, and these are actually the dimensions that are being displayed right here. So if you like that measurement, just click onto this little sign here, which accepts the auto measurement. The next step we'll do would be just putting this into a standardized report form. So you have here this button which says lesion details. You want to first add some of the images to the report. You can just choose this one. It is highlighted. Just click on this button. It's going to be added to your report. And if you also want an axial image of that and also a coronal one, you can just easily add them. And of course, you can scroll through to look for the lesion itself. There you can see it. You want to have a magnified view of that, so you just put it into the center of your image, maybe switch back to a long window, and there you can see that this is indeed the lesion, you want to add this to the report again, and also I normally tend to put this view into the report just to make the gastroenterologist able to find the lesion in its location, and I also set this one over to the report. So this is later going to look like this one here. You kind of you can determine the location of that. It's going to be in the sigmoid. The quality would be a polyp, and the size is automatically added here. You can, of course, write a comment in here, and you see the images in the way they are going to be displayed in your report. If you like that, just click OK, go on evaluating. So as you get more routine and using the software, it's going to be a real fast way and a standardized way, actually, of evaluating lesions, which allows you to communicate with your gastroenterologist in a very efficient way. This is actually something else you're frequently going to encounter in many patients. It is a diverticulum, which after having seen a number of cases, you will easily recognize. But just in case you're not sure, put a marker on it, and you're right away going to see that there is actually this black hole, I'd say, which is actually typical for a diverticulum. By double clicking on this image, you're going to blow it up to full screen format. So this is nothing, you just want to discard a marker by just clicking on here. As we move on in this patient, there is still more interesting things to be found, uh, more diverticular, as you just saw on the left-hand side, and there's another polypoid lesion we are now approaching. And actually, you saw right here at the, at the roof of the colon, there's this funny-looking lesion here. This is also a classical appearance of an inverted diverticulum. You can see it right here. So this is actually diverticulum that is filled with a residual stool, so you're never going to get them all free of stool. And this is a classical appearance of that. And then again, we have this polyp here. It's the same process again. You just want to put a marker on. It's going to be shown up right here. You can just quickly scroll back and forth and see that this is indeed a polyp with a little stalk to it. Same here in the coronal plane. And again, just an automatic measurement, quickly getting the exact size of the polyp. And it's going to be nicely magnified here. And you see this is a very good approximation of the size of a polyp. And this is actually a tool which will allow you to do a follow-up as well. So while I'm talking, the Polyp Enhanced View tool has been running in the background. So if you go to Review, you can see this button here. This button actually starts the Polyp Enhanced View tool, which is the computer-aided diagnosis tool in virtual colonoscopy. And the tool itself takes about four minutes to uh, do a calculation of the whole colon and look for polyps. So this is actually, I think, even okay for Dr. Fishman, it's less than five minutes, and it's actually a pretty pretty good tool. So after the uh, PEF calculation has been done, there's going to be a number of lesion markers here. So you can see these are the ones I already put on. I'm now going to switch to a view <coughs> where you can actually see all the markers I have put on. There are different lesions here in that colon, and you can now just jump from one of the markers to the others. So let's say what I did before, I want to see which lesions I found, so you just move to 10B. And then you can see, if you keep going on and looking at your markers, that there's actually also a marker here which is called C21B. And this is a marker which was put there by the computer-aided detection algorithm. So actually, this lesion was found by me myself and also by the computer, which is of course going to enhance your confidence that this is a real lesion. And you can just move on like this through the lesions you found, and on each of those, if they have been detected by the computer-aided detection algorithm, you also are going to see a lesion marker which has a little C in front of it. So those are all lesions that have indeed been found by the computer. And you can just go on like this, evaluate each of these lesions and add them to the report really quickly. And in this patient, of course, we can see some very impressive pathology, also this large polyp here on the stomach. And then there's another lesion which actually I myself 
saw easily in the first review, which is this polyp here, which is also on the stalk. And actually, this patient did undergo um, optical colonoscopy. Those were prepared, um, indeed adenomas. And then there's another lesion marker here, which is called C17B. And you can see that this is a real tiny lesion. So I want to see how big this actually is. Just click on it. It is located right here in the area of the cecum. And this is the area where you are normally getting a little bit tired. So OK, I have looks at the whole column. Maybe more easy to miss something there. And this has been readily detected by the computer. So you're going to see here, this is a lesion of 0.4 centimeters, so a pretty small lesion, but definitely if the patient undergoes colonoscopy, you would want to communicate this finding to your gastroenterologist. And this was actually a patient who had a strongly positive family history. So what I wanted to point out here is that even in one evaluation of this pro data set, you can have a nice overview and can find lesions and they are being confirmed by the computer-aided diagnosis tool. But of course, Virtual colonoscopy can never be evaluated without looking at supine and prone data sets. So I would do the same for the supine data set. I'm just going to quickly show you by clicking onto the markers that I put in before, the system automatically switches to the supine data set, so you can upload both data sets. And if you are not sure where a lesion is actually located, you can display them side by side. You can say, okay, I'm seeing this lesion here, which is number 1A. I also found that one in the supine and the prone data set, so you can just quickly switch over to it. Actually, that was not it, but you can find it and you can find communicating lesions which actually are seen in both projections. And this would make you really confident about what you are seeing here. <laughs> so the tool allows you, again, to correlate supine and prone data sets. And all this together with polyp enhanced view indeed makes you very confident about what you're seeing in this patient and makes it very easy and feasible to evaluate virtual colonoscopy. With this, I want to thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>